You know what I want. <laughs> I want to talk. Hello and welcome to the Raptors Reaction Podcast. I'm Ro Samson Folk here to detail for you the Raptors' latest loss in Game 5 of the second round of the NBA playoffs against the vaunted Boston Celtics, who have been very impressive in this series and going away from seemingly the blueprint that had handed them the last two games, certainly not on a platter, but they did win and it did seem like they were doing it in a certain fashion not going through the same steps in this game and eventually, and well, quite obviously punting the game early on, getting absolutely smashed in the first quarter and losing 111 to 89. So this is the Reaction Podcast. I'm Rose Sampson Folk, but Emma Brown of Raptors Twitter, a very famous member of it, probably the most famous OGN and OB stan in the world, requested that maybe I talk about something else. So I'll do that for just a second. It's a cute little story I have. It's heartwarming. Maybe not as much as, you know, a, a really heartwarming movie, but it might be nice to hear. So I'm going to talk about that for like a minute, and then I'll get into the game if you would indulge me. And if you don't want to indulge me, you just want to hear about basketball, skip ahead, sir or madam. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll meet you in a little bit down the road. So the story is, and I typically believe in my life, that we are a collection of moments. That is how we remember our life, and that's how we remember our friendships with a lot of people and our relationships with a lot of people. And typically that's what we refer to when we see them again, if we haven't seen them in a long time, or if we want to remember them. And so for my grandfather, I remember him, you know, growing up as a child, he used to do lots of magic tricks and stuff like that. He always used to give me tongue twisters or little br- little brainy questions that, you know, I had to work around when I was a kid. And he passed away this year. And he's actually the reason why I came from Mexico to Canada was to attend his funeral. He's a great man. I love him dearly. And my grandmother, she's fantastic too. And I stayed with them and helped take care of him for a little bit. Um, a, like not a huge chunk of my life, but a decent little chunk and yeah, very close to them. And I got to watch game three of this series with my grandma and got to have that moment of watching OG Ananobi hit a game winner with her. And she enjoyed it so much. And, you know, relationships in life, so much of it is just going through the motions, trying to fill the monotonous, innocuous parts of your day with things that you enjoy and things that don't completely run you over like a train so you can enjoy life. But having those moments to look back on, I thought it was cool that I got to have that with my grandma. And uh, yeah, and she's she's a great woman as well. So I thought that was cool that I got to have that because typically I don't get to spend a lot of time with my family anymore because I live in Mexico and, you know, that's that's kind of far away. But Emma, thank you for spurring this on. Listener, thank you for... I guess indulging me and in listening to this. So let's get into the game. 111 to 89. What happened early on? Why were the Raptors punting from the outset? So there's a couple things right off the start. And the biggest benefactor of the Raptors' behavior was clearly the Celtics, because the Raptors did not at all try and do what they have been doing of late. Kyle Lowry was not on ball very much. Pascal Siakam was not identified down low. And it was completely ignored in the offense, to be quite honest. It was it was a travesty. And Fred Van Vliet was put on ball repeatedly and without much success. I mean, they scored five points in the first eight minutes of the game. It was a tragedy offensively. Fred Van Vliet on ball, running most of the actions that we're seeing, getting funneled into the middle of the court. The Celtics easily taking care of him in there. He is not like Kemba Walker. He's not like Jason Tatum on the other side of the ball who will operate and make shots from the middle of the court. Typically, Fred likes to get to the rim or he likes to shoot the three. We know this about him. This is part of his game. This is part and parcel of Fred Van Vliet's whole thing. And that's why the Raptors have had a lot more success using him as an off-ball threat relocating and looking for opportunities to slide in and to form up off of drives as a shooter. That provides more spacing for the drivers and it makes him more potent in what he's meant to be doing. He was on ball and Kyle was off ball and Kyle was not particularly active off ball. And here's the thing, 
Marc Gasol is involved in most of these screening actions with Fred Van Vliet. Fred Van Vliet going into the paint is not going to be able to find him on the roll. He hasn't been able to find those passes all series. And if Gasol is just popping out of the three-point line, he's not taking those shots either. And when he does, he's missing them. So the Raptors abandoned everything that was meant to give them success, everything that they found success in earlier on. They completely moved away from it for seemingly no reason. I don't know why they would do this. The only possible explanation would be that I guess, hey, they wanted to get Kyle some rest. Maybe he was completely gassed after so many minutes the past two games. Maybe Mike Budenholzer is shaking his fist at everybody saying, See, this is why I play Giannis X amount of minutes. 36 is too much. I don't know what, you know, Mike Budenholzer actually kind of has like a, a draw, I think. So just imagine that impression with a draw, I suppose, and maybe more masculine tone. But He doesn't get that from me. But regardless, what I'm trying to say here is the Raptors and Nick Nurse had a horrible game plan from the outset, and they just completely set themselves up to lose this game. And it's no wonder, even though they did have great defensive stretches, that they lost this game by a resounding number. Like, they lost by 22 points and were down by 30 for a decent chunk of the game, or between 25 to 30 points for a decent chunk of the game. And why did that happen? Because of the game plan, because they didn't look to establish anything that was meaningful or successful early on. And what do you do at that point? Like, Serge Ibaka comes in, he can make some shots. Norm Powell comes in, he can make some shots. But if you already, like, shot six holes in the boat, you're sinking, dude. Like, Ibaka is not an octopus. Norm Powell is not an octopus. They're not going to fill every hole. And I don't know what octopus means on the basketball court, but they're not Luka Doncic, LeBron James, James Harden, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant. They're not like the best players in the world coming to save everybody. It just wasn't going to happen. You have to put your players in a position to succeed. And the Raptors didn't do that at all. And so did they have impressive stretches defensively where we saw a lot of zone utilized? And yes, great stretches defensively. Yes, but you can't hold out forever if you're not scoring on the other end because typically missed shots, especially from three, are going to jumpstart transition and you're not going to be able to get back in your half-court set every single possession. You just can't do that. It's not sustainable. You have to be able to score in the NBA. Defense wins championships. Yes, we saw that last year, but they also scored the damn ball. They put it in the hoop and they had a bunch of different ways to do it. They had Kawhi Leonard. They had Kyle Lowry. And God forbid, if Fred Van Vliet was ever, ever on ball and taking over the the offense, it was typically a shot clock hero type of thing. Like he was hoisting at the end and he had a nice little run of that when he was on that major heater that he was in in the playoffs last year. But the Raptors, they fell down early. They followed that blueprint, blueprint, sorry. And Nick Nurse played the starters for far too long. It like... And it resulted in Serge Ibaka, who was playing in a meaningless game at this point. Like, it is both the most meaningful game and meaningless because they punted early. They got absolutely smashed. They couldn't stop any actions for a time. When Marcus all left the floor, the offense gets marginally better because Serge Ibaka is willing to shoot and he can make teams pay. So that adds a little bit of a dimension to the offense. But you also get a layup line to the rim on the other side of the court because Gasol has been great defensively. But he hasn't been able to pair these two aspects of his game together. It's like you just wish you could stitch those two together because Gasol needs to be a shot maker in this series, not a creator. And he's trying to create with other people who don't want to shoot. And especially in a game like this, it just, the Raptors don't have the recipe to just play a completely different brand than they did when they won game won games three and four. You have to go through Kyle. That's the way this works. And identify when Pascal is going to be able to take advantage on the inside. I mean, he was efficient tonight. And you couldn't even notice because the game was rendered meaningless. Because the Raptors, they just came out to get punched. Like slobber knocked. Absolutely smashed. And no recourse to score or get back into the game. Norm Powell had 16 points. Matt Thomas had 10. Typically, this would be great you know, great work off of the bench. This would be a huge help in a game that matters. But guess what? It's meaningless because the Raptors starters produced nothing because they didn't play a style that was advantageous for them. 
It wasn't advantageous at all. It was lazy intellectually and physically on the floor. They created nothing. They got dominated and it just wasn't pretty to watch and they didn't have the fix. And in the second half, they come out immediately and start running Pascal Siakam pick and rolls with Marcus Hall. Here's the thing, guy. Why not do that in the first half? Why not offer Pascal Siakam some recourse to try and get around a very good Boston Celtics defense? Top two in the playoffs, by the way. Top four in the regular season. They're not just some schmucks out there. You can't just run willy-nilly. Like, I understand the Raptors like their read and react aspect of the offense. That's good. But put the ball in Kyle's hands then if you want to see the read and react. Fred is not creative enough as a passer to just put the weight of this offense on his shoulders. Fred is a really good player. He's going to get the bag this summer. But you're not putting him in a position to succeed and you're making him look terrible. And Kyle, what is the point of having him work off ball like this? This isn't the regular season. He's not going to go supernova off ball. This is the Celtics who are almost designed specifically to give Pascal Siakam and Fred Van Vliet fits because they operate at the rim and at the three-point line. When players don't operate in the middle, the Celtics, they feast. Their defense is really good at picking on those players. So the Raptors played with the hand that they they were dealt. I mean, that they dealt themselves, basically. It was an extremely poor performance that was born out of an extremely poor game plan that offered little assistance to anybody on the Raptors in what they wanted to do. And they got dominated thoroughly throughout the game. And they had very good stretches defensively. But that doesn't matter if you're not going to score the ball because you can't get set up every single time and the other team will get out in transition. And the other team, they will make shots. And especially when you're so damn tired from defending so often every possession, you never get a break because the other team never has to take the ball out. You're going to die on screens. You're going to jump. You're going to jump on pump fakes. And guess what? You're not going to have the legs to recover. And your closeouts are going to get sloppier and sloppier. So it became the point where the Celtics just needed a pump fake and one dribble to completely dissect the Raptors' defense. And that kept happening. And so when the Celtics needed a big stretch, when the Raptors felt like, oh, it might be dangerous coming back in, all they did was put a little bit of pressure on the offense. And then things worked out for them. It was an extremely easy game for them. And it was, as far as for Raptors fans... That, that was borderline unwatchable. That was one of the most puzzling, one of the most disappointing games of the whole season. OG Ananobi was okay. He was awesome on the glass again. He made a couple shots. He showed that ability to cut off ball. And, you know, he did his thing. But, man, the Raptors just, they didn't have any juice. None at all. So, if they want to do better in the future, bring the juice, man. Game plan. Do something better. It's just, it's tough to watch. The Reggie Evans Award goes to OG Ananobi. Uh, Once again, pretty impressed with him. As I said, he he helped out on the glass. He's opportunistic in the half court. He's, you know, a great one-on-one defender. He's improving on help side. And in a game like this, it's hard to notice somebody shining bright. And he wasn't shining super bright, but he was definitely, he was one of the better players out there on the floor. So, Kudos to him. Credit to him. The top quick reaction comment from Rubbins, the I is a one and the S is a money sign, says, quote, wraps in seven and ellipses points, end quote. So, yeah, I like I could conceive of this, but it completely it's so dependent on the Raptors getting back to that blueprint of how their offense works against a team like this. Can't rely on Fred like that. You got to let him play off ball. You got to put Kyle on Blind Siakam in the paint when he's open. Just recognize what your players are good at and don't ask them to do things that typically other players on the roster are better at doing. Having Fred run the offense when Kyle Lowry is right there for so much of the game in a game five in a 2-2 series is such negligence. Unless there's something they're not telling us, unless Kyle came before and said, I can't handle the load tonight, then I guess you just say, Kyle had to go supernova to win the other games, and this is the price you pay. You have to punt a game in a seven-game series. There's not that many games to go around. And, you know, they did the first game already when he should have been well-rested. It's just tough, man. And that probably wasn't the case. This is probably a game plan thing. And that being the game plan, 
is mind boggling. It makes no sense whatsoever. It's extremely disappointing. And yeah, that's it for me. Thanks for tuning in. I've been Samson Folk. This is the Raptors Reaction Podcast. And whether you're getting into this in the morning or at night, have a blessed day and goodbye.